Canva have been making a few little changes lately and one of those changes affects the way link in bio websites work. So I wanted to create an updated link in bio website tutorial for you because some of the things that I showed in my previous video are no longer working. So I wanted to give you an update and I also wanted to make it a little bit more fun this time because I also came across some really cool inspiration on Pinterest. As I was looking for some web inspiration for my own sales page, I ended up coming across this really interesting thing from Russian designers using this program called Taplink and they were creating some really cool things for link in bio style websites. They were creating mobile first sales pages. So if you're trying to sell a particular thing, you've got a special launch on or you just really want to highlight one particular product, making a dedicated sales page that is mobile first to link in your socials. So I wanted to show you the inspiration I found and show you how you can do something similar to this using Canva. So first of all, the inspiration. So I came across this stuff on Pinterest, as you can see here. And as you can see, they had lots of layering. There's it's very scrapbooky type of feel. It's really fun and dynamic. And I thought it was really fun and inspiring because it's not how you normally would see a link in bio type of website. And these ones are more sales pagey. They're not just a list of links to different things. These are very specifically just focusing in on one particular product and designing it just like a full on sales page, but it's for mobile. So when somebody clicks on your, you know, your link in bio on Instagram, they'll go there and they'll actually be able to read the full sales page. And because it's designed for mobile first, it's really easy for them to go through and look at all the details. And it's also designed in a way that's just beautiful and fun. It's not real bare basic just so that it works for mobile. It's really beautiful. So I wanted to see if I could create something similar, but using Canva. Now the thing that has changed in Canva. So in my previous tutorial, there was something called a mobile first website. You could design a website that was specifically for mobile. However, these websites are no longer working. The ones that you've already published, yes, they continue working as was. So that's fine if you already created one. But if you're now trying to create one, it's not going to work anymore. Doing those particular dimensions, it now shows it more like a slideshow, which is not what we want. We want it to work as an actual website. So what we actually need to do to make this work as a mobile site is to actually make the page a full page, just like a normal website, but then just put it in the middle. So in Canva, you want to go to create and you want to choose a website. So you just want to use a regular website as your base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this up for mobile. So we're going to go to shapes, just choose a basic square. You're going to put that square in the corner. You want to make sure you've got rulers on here. So if you don't, you go over to file settings, show rulers and guides. Now we can make this anywhere between 450 and 500. So we might go 500 to give ourselves a little bit more space. Then you want to center it. So you want to make sure that you see that pink line. So it's centered. Then you can pull it right down to the end there. So now this is going to be our canvas, our workspace. Now at the background, it's really up to you. You could put an image in here. You could just put a basic background color. You just got to think that if somebody was going to, you just got to think if somebody opens this site on their desktop, that's what they're going to see. So you could add a little surprise and have some sort of background image, or you could just have a plain color. It's up to you. All right, so I've set up my colors and now I can start designing. So this is where we want to start thinking about what we actually want to put in here. So as I said, I wanted to try and get a little bit creative with it and add these more collage type elements. And there are heaps of beautiful collage elements in Canva. There's so many different things you can search for. So you could put in things like scrapbook, ripped paper, um, just think of little things you're looking for, you know, like looking for a notebook or looking for a clipboard or ripped paper or tape. Just start searching those different elements. And then also, if you find things you really love, don't forget to click on those three dots and you can look at things like what keywords they've used. So you can find other things and also look at the designer and see if that creator has more things and also view collection. So there are different ways you can find similar types of things when you find stuff you really love. So going back and looking at our inspiration here, you can see they've added really fun, playful thing at the start here. So they've added sort of the title and tagline and then some fun and playful stuff. So maybe we should do something like that where it's not just straight into plain text, but adding some more imagery, things like this. So you sort of think about it like what do people first see when they open it up. Now something you want to keep in mind is keeping these within this area. So you can go over to the guidelines here and actually put little guides in to help remind yourself. Then when we've got things like this, if we wanted to go off the page here, you want to crop it. So you want to grab that little end there 
and crop it down because we want to make sure everything stays in that area so we don't have any issues where it sort of makes it wonky for mobile in any way but the more that we can keep things in that area the more smooth this is going to work and we're not going to have things go wrong or look odd on mobile the other thing is we don't want lots of pages so you don't want to create like the top part and then the bottom part or anything like that you want the whole thing to be a singular page so the thing you have to do here is instead of creating a new page for different sections is you actually need to, need to drag the bottom of the page to make it longer. What you need to do to make this work is you're going to just drag the bottom here. So you'll see that double ended arrow and we're just going to extend the page. So as you go, you just want to keep making that page longer and longer. So obviously with the sales page, you're going to end up with quite a long page. So you don't need to go crazy and make it super long to begin with. Just as you go adding more and more content, slowly drag it down, keep adding more and more as you go. That way you don't end up making too much either. You just, as you start adding more stuff, just start extending it down to continue adding more things. So you just want to make it as long as you need. So for something like a sales page that we're going to design here, we're going to want to make it pretty long. So the thing is you can actually continue to pull it down and make it longer as you go so as you start to run out of room like oh i actually need a bit more space here you can actually continue to pull it down and give yourself more all space right. so now all right so i want to show you some things too with layering so especially when you want to do something quite layered like the examples we looked at so let's say i've got a few elements here that i want to put over my little mock-up here so i can put that there then i want to do what i said before and crop it down Then I want to do what I said before and crop it down because if this image you notice it doesn't crop. Occasionally you'll find things that don't. So what we need to do is make sure that it sits within there because it doesn't crop. Now we're going to right click, go to layer and show layers. Now because we want to keep that background, we don't want to keep sending to back because then we have to keep moving this background color. So what we can do is come over here to the layers panel and move things into the right position. And that way I can start adding all these extra layers without it getting too overwhelming and confusing. I can see exactly where things are and just simply drag them around to the right. Now buttons, if you want to add a button. So let's say we want to create a button now to purchase. So I've just simply put a rectangle in there. It's nothing special, but button and put some text. So we're going to click on this rectangle now, click on the three dots and then click on link. And that's where you're going to put the link of where you want it to go to. Then you're also going to click on the text and do the same just in case someone clicks on that text and somehow misses the box, making sure both are linked can make a difference. Now when, you add now, when you add a link to text, it's going to add an underline. So you're going to go back up here and just remove that underline if you don't want that. Now, as you start to make this longer and longer, you'll be down the bottom here and you'll find an element you want and you'll click to add it in. You're like, where's it gone? It will go into the middle of the page. You're going to find it all the way up there. So just something to note if you are adding things in as your page starts to get really long, you're like, where did that go? Where is that? I thought I added it. That's what's happened. So you will have to scroll up to go get it. Now to avoid that. Now, if you want to avoid that, of course, you can just click and drag and drop it into the page. Now, the other thing as you go along is you might want to be able to zoom out a bit and look at the whole thing, especially as it starts to get long. So down the bottom here, you'll see a zoom thing and you can zoom out so you can see more of it all at once, which is very helpful as we get longer to sort of get that bigger picture and see how things are all looking together. So I'm just going to keep mine to this just to show you. So it's not super, super long, this one, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do here with this. Now, what we're going to do is go to publish website. We want to go to settings. Now you want to make sure navigation menu is turned off. You want to make sure you do have resize on mobile turned on. Now it's completely up to you if you want to make it search engine visible and all that sort of thing. And if you want a social media link preview, that sort of stuff's up to you, completely optional. Then continue to publish. If you want to have a particular address, you can do that. So there we have our mobile sales page. And I have to say that looks pretty cool. Like trying to code something like that would take a lot more work, trying to, you know, add all these different elements to it. And those examples I saw there had even more stuff going on. So as you can see in Canva, you can create something like this 
really quickly, really easily and make something really beautiful. So I hope you found this helpful getting an updated tutorial on how you can create a mobile first website so you can create something that's a link in bio type website or even a link in bio sales page like I have created here. And if you'd like to learn more about using Canva, graphic design and branding, make sure you subscribe and happy creating.